Hey there guys. So let's continue building the tooltip. So my server is running and my docs are also running here. So when we hover over the content, uh, we are greeted with hi, I am a tooltip. So we have hard coded this right now. So we want it to be, we wanted to take it from the props. So for that, we discussed that we will have a render prop and that prop can either be a string or it can be JSX. So let's go ahead into my component and from the prop types package, I'll just import a couple more things. So I'll import string and one of type. And these will be the types for my render prop. And inside the render tooltip function, I'll just destructure render from the props. This render is equal to this dot props. And now inside the h2 i'll render my prop here also while we're at it i'll just change this h2 to a div so that we don't end up adding the styles for a heading and for prop types i'll add the prop types for my render prop so i'll say one of type and it can be a node or it can be a string and we'll make it required for now so give that a save and so right now we haven't updated that into the docs where we are rendering it. So I'll go into tooltip.mdx and here inside the playground, I'll give this a prop called, hey there, and hit save. I'll go into here and now our div is getting rendered properly. So it's still getting rendered at a weird place, but we'll position this correctly. And one more thing we can improve the docs here is by importing a prop stable component that docs provide. So I'll say prop stable, import that. And here I'll just use that. So prop stable off. Here I'll just pass in my tooltip component and give that a save. Yep, so it's now rendering the table correctly. So these are our props. We can add in some description for the props by going in to the file that we had here so here's a source code and i'll add in some comments here which will be picked by the docs package pretty smart so let's say this is a wrapped content and for a render prop i'll say this is the tooltip content give that a save cool so it's updated correctly now so the next thing we have to do is position this tooltip correctly. So right now it's getting positioned absolutely from top 50% and left 50%. So this is what we have to actually work over with. And before that we go further, uh, I have a diagram to show how we can proceed. So consider that this gray box is our content and we want our tooltip to appear right over here so it should appear above this content and what we can do is so we can find the inner height of our viewport so this white box is our viewport so we want the height of this viewport so we can get that using window.inner height and subtract the distance from the top this content has to position our tooltip from the bottom. So we'll be positioning our tooltip from the bottom so that even if it overflows, it never actually comes below the top of the content. So that's pretty interesting point. And uh, how we can do that is using element.getBoundingClientRect. So this method actually gets us some dimensions of the element that we provided with. So we actually need some values from here so it provides us left top right bottom x y width height and we'll, we'll be using some of these here and so let's proceed by actually first getting the values here so i'll go into my source code and first i'll find the values of dimensions uh, for my wrap content so this is getting rendered inside the span here and we want its values to be accessible inside our render tooltip function 
So we can access this Tom in a React way using refs. So first I'll just go ahead and create a ref here. So let's say this dot source ref is equal to react dot create ref. So this will create a ref and I'll pass this ref to this span here. So let's say ref is equal to this dot source ref. So now I'll be able to access this storm here. So inside my render tooltip function, when the state is active, I actually want to find the dimensions of this ref. So I can do this dot source ref dot current. So in order to access the DOM element, we do dot current for the ref in the new API. And I'll just do get bounding blind rect so capital R and I'll just log these into the console so console.log dimensions let's see what I get let's give that a save in my browser go into the console so looks like we have a warning here so each child in an array or iterator should have a unique key so this is being rendered in a render function actually so we are returning an array here of source and render tooltip so what we can do is actually provide a key here so that react knows and give that a save and if i refresh now yeah so that should get rid of the problem that we had so if i hover over this now so it is providing some helpful values here so let's look into what we get so we're getting bottom, height, left, right, top, width, and X and Y. So we need a few, a few of these here. So what I'll do is I'll go here. And actually, I'll just destructure the values that we're going to need here. So let's say, oh, let me refer the diagram that we had. So I need to subtract top from inner height in order to get the bottom position of the tooltip so let's see uh, so right now I'm positioning it from the top so we want it to be positioned from the bottom instead but it should be a window dot inner height minus the top position of the content so top we can actually fetch from here which you're getting in the console right now here and one more thing to note is that we, uh, we would also have to take into account if the window is getting scrolled so uh, what we can do here is actually if we subtract the scroll y position of window we should be fine so i'll just do window dot inner height I subtracted that from top I further subtracted scroll Y position so to, to take into account if a window is getting scrolled and this should actually get a tooltip position in a right way so let's see if I hover over this now so I can see that it's getting positioned correctly in terms of the Y position so next uh, actually I think let's just make this a bit more visible so i'll rend, uh, wrap my content of render prop inside another div and i'll just give this some styling so let's say div style i'll make this relative so that i can position it accordingly and give it some background so background of let's say 424242 four, four, my favorite color and I'll change the color to white that is save and let's see so we can see the tooltip is getting rendered there so I feel like I can improve the stylings a bit more so let's say mm, I'll go into the styles maybe give this a, some padding so let's say 8 pixel by 16 pixel and maybe also add in some border radius I think 4 pixel 5 let's say 4 4 should be good enough so 
yeah so it's looking good certainly better so now the next thing I have to do is actually position this from the left so for that I have another diagram that we can refer to so this gray box is again our content from before and now we want the left position and add in half of the width of the content here so that way we always know that where the tooltip should it start from and I'll just go here and further get the value for left and the width cool so now I need to update my left position of the tooltip content so I'll just say uh, left and I'll add in half of the width of the content give that a save so now great so now as you can see it's starting certainly from the position where it wanted where we want it to be but we actually want it to be positioned to the center so it should actually uh, start 50% from the position where it's right now so since it's already relatively positioned here we can actually do that by adding a left of negative 50 percent so that should actually start it from the correct way and yeah cool so this is certainly looking better so we can actually move this a bit more to the top so i guess i can add in some factor to my bottom value let's say 8 pixel and yeah this is certainly looking better so now all we are missing is that bottom triangle so for that i have some css i guess so we can use here so i'll just paste in, paste in that here cool so i just pasted in some css to render that little triangle here so let's see cool so that should fix it so this pan here is just for the triangle just uh, uses the border color property to render it and there we have it there's a tooltip and next thing we can maybe okay so we added some focus events but we haven't added the tab index property so tab index is required if you want to focus into something so if i give this a tab index of zero now i'll be able to focus this using my tab key so if i do tab get that a refresh maybe okay and so yeah so when i focus over it using my tab key it still renders the tooltip which is pretty cool for accessibility reasons and so ESLint is giving some warning because we are actually adding some focus events on a non-interactive element so we can actually turn this to a button rule so I'll give this a rule button so it's accessible by screen readers and we can improve this further by giving this an area property of area described by described by and this needs a ID and it should actually refer to the tooltip content that we have to be more accessible by the uh, screen reader so let's say wtjs tooltip content and now i have to actually give this div an id so that screen reader can find it so let's, let's say wtjs tooltip content and that should be it guys <laughs> 